We're looking at bonding questions. We're starting with question 12, and we'll go through questions 12 through 16. So question 12, how, um, I'm sorry, which term refers to how strongly an atom of an element attracts electrons in a chemical bond with an atom of a different element? Well, of course, once again, just like in the last video, I mentioned to you electronegativity. Electronegativity is an indication of how strong an atom wants to pull electrons towards itself and of course sets up what's going on with bonding. So this is now the third, I think at least the third question with electronegativity. Okay, let's move on. Question 13, which substance has metallic bonding? Well, in order to have metallic bonding, you're dealing with metals. And really, that's what you're looking for is the answer that's the metal. Well, they're not giving you um, symbols so that you can just go to the periodic table and look here for the metal. Instead, you have to realize either what the compound formula is or, of course, the individual element symbol. Well, compounds, we don't have to worry about metallic bonding. It's just a metal. Iodine, if I look it up, if I'm not sure what iodine symbol is, of course you would go to reference table S. Iodine is symbol I, and it is a non-metal. The only other choice then it could be would be silver. Silver, again, if you don't know the symbol, you'll look it up, but silver is here, AG. All right, now question 14. Based on table S, an atom of which of the elements has the weakest attraction for electrons in a chemical bond. Once again, we're dealing with electronegativity. But in this case, the weakest attraction means it's going to be the lowest value. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to reference table S and look up every single one of these. Don't not do that. Because when you do, and you skip steps, and you think you kind of just got it, you don't. Now, I didn't put the other part of reference table S here, but you would look up all four. Electronegativity is this column here. And I would suggest writing them down. You're going to have your separate reference tables than the test. For instance, polonium is 2.0, sulfur 2.6 when you look it up. Selenium is 2.6, and tellurium is 2.1, so the winner here, or the answer really, is choice one. All right, question 15, which element reacts with oxygen to form ionic bonds? So we saw a question like this before. Ionic means you're dealing with a metal and a nonmetal, and it's the transfer of electrons. So oxygen is a nonmetal, so we're looking for the metal. And once again, they give you the names, not the symbols. So if you need to, look up the symbols on reference table S and then figure out where the element is on the periodic table. For instance, calcium is Ca. We have hydrogen, hydrogen's H, chlorine, Cl, and nitrogen, of course, here is N. So we go back, we have chlorine, we have nitrogen, we have hydrogen, and we have calcium. Well, what's going to react with oxygen to form an ionic bond, metal, nonmetal? That's calcium. And that happens to be choice one. Okay, finally, question 16. Which atom in the ground state has a stable valence electron configuration? Well, stable valence electron configuration means that I have an element or atoms of an element that don't want to bond with anything else. That, of course, means we're dealing with noble gases. This almost sounds like a question you might have put on your periodic table as well. So now you're just looking at which of these four is a noble gas. So, of course, if the answer is, again, one, that's argon, but if you weren't sure, just erase this. I really want you to be able to see stuff. Here's argon, noble gas column. And the other four choices, we had aluminum, uh, silicon. Where are you? There you are. 
right next to aluminum and sodium. So argon was the answer. Check out more videos. Keep working hard. Good luck.